Good evening from Pine Grave Missionary Baptist Church. I welcome you to our Christmas Eve service. If there's anybody listening from the radio, uh, glad to have you tuned in. If you're going to be watching by video, I say Merry Christmas to you. May God bless you and your family through the Christmas celebration of the best gift offered, the best gift ever received. Amen. Amen. Let's begin with a word of prayer, please, if you would, bow your head. Father, as we come to you in prayer, I come to you with a very grateful heart. I thank you, Father, for another opportunity to be in your sacred desk. I thank you, Father, for another day of life that you've blessed me and each one of us here with. I just thank you for that. We take life for granted. We take our health for granted. And the many blessings that you give us, Father, there's just so many things that you do and you take care of, Father, and we never give it another thought. And yeah, Father, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for Christmas. I'm thankful for the gift that you gave mankind, your only begotten Son, that he was willing to leave heaven and come put on a robe of flesh. And Father, not to stay in a, in a manger, but Father, to go to the cross. And Father, he didn't stay on the cross. He went to the tomb. And Father, he didn't stay in the tomb either. He arose. And I thank you, Father, for that. We could uh, not have this talk. We couldn't have a relationship with you if it was not for the price that's been paid for us. And I thank you for that love and that gift here this evening. And Father, I pray now that you'll speak to our hearts and our spirits this evening. I pray that you'll challenge us and give us a new way of looking at things. I pray, Father, that your will be done in life, that needs will be met here this evening. And for anyone who listens to this message, that it might... Uh, they may take time to, to really look at things differently. I praise you and thank you for all you've done for us in the year of 2020. We complain about everything about it. But, Father, you've blessed us, and I thank you for thy blessings. Father, we don't like the times we're in, uncertain times in the future, but, Father, you hold the future, and I know we'll be okay with you. Father, just be with us now. May everything that's said and done here be for your praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray and ask, amen. amen. The title of the message for this evening is A Normal Christmas or a Real Christmas. First, let's talk about a normal Christmas. A normal Christmas varies from person to person, from church to church, denomination to denomination, country to country, tradition to tradition, doesn't it? Christmas has a different meaning to many different people. For some, it's a time to party. It's a time to feast on good food and candy and desserts and gluttony. It's to have friends and family over for get-togethers, to exchange gifts, to have good food and drinks and fun and just be together. For some people, it's a vacation. Before Christmas, they take off and are off all the rest of the uh, month of December and go back to work after the first of the year. From November up to Christmas, leading up to it, it's a time of shopping. Of course, Black Friday was different this year, but you have Cyber Monday and all the ways to, to shop online. Everything's changed, but people still buying and getting all they can get for the right price. Shopping, 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 all the way to the last minute. There's people out there right now hustling and bustling, trying to find something for somebody. To the Western World Church, up until this COVID showed up, this pandemic, a normal Christmas possibly consisted of Christmas programs, Christmas caroling, Christmas dinners, candlelight services, Christmas cantatas, end of the year business meetings, electing new officers for the upcoming year, proposing a budget for the new year of the church, singing Christmas hymns, a time of business was the normal activity. We can remember that, don't we? 
We've got hindered this year because of the COVID and the pandemic. We haven't had a Christmas program and some of these things. But that would have been and is has been the normal Christmas for most churches. Amen? Amen. That's what we reflect back on. And we miss it. Amen? We definitely miss it. The word Christmas, as you already know, has the real meaning in the word Christmas, which is Christ. Everybody say Christ. 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 Christ has a different ring to it. When you say Christ, it's got like an authoritative sound to it, doesn't it? It has a tone that's different. Jesus, Jesus has a different tone to it. It has a sovereignty, a love, a meaning. It means something. It ain't like Joe or John or Jay or Kevin. But when you say Christ, it brings it. It kind of hits you a little bit different, doesn't it? Do you know that's the reason why Satan wants to take it out of everything? Let's don't say Merry Christmas. Let's say Happy Holiday. Let's say Happy Holiday. We would not want to offend anyone. The real Christmas is Christ. The normal Christmas is everything else but Christ. Without Christ. Let's turn to our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. Beginning with verse 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Got a couple scripture readings this evening. Give you a chance to turn there. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise... When his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now if you would, turn to Matthew chapter 2 for the other reading. Matthew chapter 2, beginning with verse 7 through 12, if you'd like to follow along. Matthew chapter 2, verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh and be warned of god in a dream that they should not return to herod they departed into their own country another way 
The significance of Christmas is Christ. Without Christ, there is no salvation for mankind. In that Matthew 1, 21, where it said, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall what? Save his people from their sins. Christ had to come and pay the sin debt of all of mankind. Without Christ, there will be no hope for abundant life or eternal life. No hope for things to be any better for man than what we have right now, here, now. Crying, dying, sickness, suffering, cancer, COVID, heart disease, separation from those you love, aging, hurting, and then headed to hell. Without Christ, that's all there could be. There would be no hope. There wouldn't be any peace. There wouldn't be nothing to look forward to. I'm looking forward to the day that I could be in the presence of my Lord in his heaven. Amen. I'm looking forward to the day that you won't have aches and pains. I'm looking forward to the day that I'll be at my loved ones, my mother, my father, my grandmother, those who's went on before me that are saved. There's a lot of good brothers and sisters in Christ that has meant so, so much to me up through my life that held up the banner of Christ, lived the example, proclaimed the gospel, sung his hymns of praise, and done those things and enriched my life and was an influence as a, as a Christian follower. And they went on to be with their Lord. I'm looking forward to that day when I can be with them again. How can you look forward to something that's not attainable? Heaven is attainable if you'll accept a free gift of salvation. Amen. To all. If you don't go to heaven, it's your own fault. Because God wants all to go there and made the way. In the Christmas story, most people view Christ as a little baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then they leave him in the manger. Some people never think about Christ except for Christmas in a little manger. That's the only knowledge some people have. And we went far enough along and generations have passed by with people being very godly and promoting the gospel that there's a lot of people probably don't know that. Because we know it, we assume everybody else knows it. He was a baby in swaddling clothes. But he was more than just a baby. He was God. Did you ever think about it? That was God in swaddling clothes. In Matthew 1, 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall, shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Jesus Christ is God's only begotten son. He was God. Have you given it thought that God had not been with man since in his presence since the Garden of Eden? They was in fellowship till sin come along, amen? And then when sin entered in, Adam and Eve was driven out of the garden. Sin separated man from God. But you know when Jesus come on the scene, God was back on the scene. He was back on the scene. He was more than a baby. He was and is the Son of God. The propitiation, propitiation for sin. The Savior of the world to all who will accept his free gift of salvation. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, there was nothing no more full of grace and truth and light than Jesus Christ. He was the light brought into the world. John chapter 3, verses 11 through 19, Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus here. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 16. I know y'all don't know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're celebrating Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, that only begotten Son. Is this the first time he's ever been on the scene? No, he's eternity past. We was made in his image. That's the first time he come in flesh, a robe of flesh, to dwell among us, not to be pretty, not to live an example, but to die on the cross of Calvary to pay our sin debt. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There's not a man, there's not a woman, not a boy or a girl, no one that cannot be saved but they must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. If your Christmas is everything else but Christ, if your Christmas is not Christ-centered, even as a child of God, I don't care how long you've been saved, if we are not focused on the things of God, if we're not adoring and worshiping Jesus Christ, then we have an Xmas, not a Christmas. We've left Christ out. We've all, well, here is Christmas Eve. I'm sure people's already had some get-togethers. We've all shopped and put up Christmas trees and some's hung up lights and we've done this and done that. We've run here and run there and we've got things to do and we need to hurry up and get out of here because we've got stuff to do. We will leave Christ out. America has left Christ out. Amen. That's why we're having a pandemic. America has left Christ out for years, not just 2020, for years. The word Advent, if I understood it right, was a time, a period, a period of time for about four weeks was a preparation to worship. And people don't give Christ a split minute. There's churches all through this country right now that will not have a service because it's Christmas Eve. We don't have time to be in church because too many people's got too many family dinners to go to and we just can't get there. I'm not dishing that. I'm not dishing anybody that's not here tonight. I'm not. But we leave Christ out. And then we expect God to have mercy on us. We, have, we expect God to bless our households. We expect God just to keep dumping the blessings out. Dump the checks out. The send of checks and the relief checks. Just keep sending something. Just keep sending. Just keep blessing America. Just keep piping it in. Because we're one nation under God. We proclaim that. We're the nation. We're the big powerhouse. God just keep it up. Keep bringing it but we'll leave Christ out. And then we wonder why we're in the mess we're in. Are we going to have a normal Christmas or a real Christmas? Without knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will have an Xmas. You're leaving Christ out. This is a normal, popular, popular annual event with the title of Christmas. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and a newborn King, then you can have and worship and have a real Christmas. 
The Magi, the three wise men, had to choose which king to worship, King Herod or Jesus of Nazareth. Even today, wise men seek Jesus. Are you a wise man? Is America a wise country? Will you have a normal Christmas, brother or sister in Christ, or a real Christmas with Christ? We must take time and make an effort to worship our Lord and Savior by praying, meditating on him, meditating upon his word, by reading and studying and sharing it with others. Put away the normal Christmas and take time and be a holy people. I need to be holy. You need to be holy. Worship the newborn king, the son of God, and be looking for his return. Matthew 24, 44, this come to my mind. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. You know, everybody celebrates the birth of Christ. He very well could come for his church. And how many people would ever expect that? He could come anytime. And we need to be ready. We need to be watching. We need to be ready and we need to be looking. My question to you this evening in closing, will you have a normal Christmas or are you going to have a real Christmas at your home? It's up to you. You have to do that. You have to choose that. I have to choose that. May God bless you. Merry Christmas. Until the next time, goodbye.